Hello. Today we're going to be talking about gas logs. Now, we'll start off with a sort of visual representation. You have a balloon right over here, and inside your balloon is going to be gas in the form of particles. Now these particles are spaced out far away from each other. They're actually moving inside of the balloon in straight lines until they hit the edge and then they will bounce off. And they'll continue to move in straight lines and sometimes they will actually collide with each other. Um, that collision results in uh, what's called an elastic collision. Uh, think of it kind of like billiard balls. When they collide with each other they bounce off and go into another direction and they don't lose a lot of kinetic energy in the process. Now, now that we have that established, let's start with Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law says that there is a proportional relationship between pressure and volume. So that relationship is represented by the equation P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. So essentially, if you know the pressure and the volume that are, say, inside a balloon, and suddenly there's more pressure added, you know exactly how much with how much pressure is being applied now. You could go and calculate what the volume is based on this relationship by isolating the volume. So, next we have Charles' Law. Charles' Law actually describes a direct relationship between temperature and volume. So, as far as the formula that's represented, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So basically what it's establishing is that if the temperature increases, the volume will also decrease and vice versa. So if I took this balloon and I placed it into the freezer, you would see that the volume actually decreases, the balloon will shrink down. So what's happening is that the particles inside of the balloon when they're when the balloon is cooled down, they're not moving as fast and as erratically. So that's what actually causes the balloon to shrink down. And if the, they heat up, 
then the opposite happens. They're actually moving faster and more erratically. That causes the expansion of the balloon. So just like with Boyle's Law, if you know three of the factors, you can isolate a given factor and be able to solve for it. So let's say you do know that the volume was five liters and it was at 10 Kelvin, but then suddenly the temperature increased to 20 Kelvin. Now you can isolate for what the volume would be at that 20 Kelvin. Now when it comes to temperature, when you're dealing with gases, they must always be in Kelvin. It does affect the, uh, the calculations. So next you have combined gas law which is fairly straightforward. It actually combines both of Boyle's Law and Charles' Law. So in that sense, you have P1 times V1 over T1 equals P2 times V2 over T2. So, just like with the previous two laws, um, if you have most of these factors as that you know of, you can isolate a given factor and be able to find that. So, It's all about rearranging and using deductive reasoning in order to find a given value. Next, we're going to cover Avogadro's Law, which establishes that uh, moles, which are the actual number of atoms or molecules, in this case if it's a gas, um, the number of atoms that are, that the gas is made up of, if that increases, then the volume will also increase. So this is actually represented with the following formula. over V1 equals N2 over V2. Where N represents the number of moles of the gas and V, as before, represents the volume. So, the relationship is essentially similar with Charles' Law. Um, next is going to be Ideal Gas Law. Um, First, I think I want to establish STP. So, 
STP refers to standard pressure and temperature. Um, if you see a any sort of uh, question or equation that refers to STP, the standard pressure is going to be one ATM atmospheric unit and then the standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius or two 73 Kelvin. So, as I said, um, Kelvin is what you want to use anytime you're dealing with temperature for gas. Um, many questions may have it, uh, may provide you with Celsius. You just have to do the conversion in order to get the proper answer that you're looking for. So finally we have ideal gas law. Um, ideal gas law actually deals with a few very specific units of measurement that have to be present. So you will have to do conversions as far as that goes. Um, so ideal gas law is represented by PV equals N times R times T. So P represents pressure and your pressure has to be in ATM, atmospheric units. Volume must be in liters. N, as we established with Avogadro's law, represents the number of moles of the gas. Then you have T, which is temperature, which is always in Kelvin. So what's left now, which we haven't covered yet, is R. R is what's known as a constant. So whenever you have all of these units available, you can use this constant for the ideal gas formula. And R equals 0 0.0821. And the units are going to be ATM times liter over Kelvin times mole. So that one is a little bit funky. Um, and much like all of the previous laws that we looked at, you will be doing similar arithmetic as far as isolating a given given a uh, factor that you were looking for in a given question and just trying to isolate that and find how much of that specific factor 
there is based on the given information that you actually have available. So that covers our gas laws that we establish here. Um, hopefully you have a, at least a basic understanding of these concepts and you can go into some of these questions and be able to tackle them. Um, that'll do it. <laughs>